This is Alexa Hampton. This is 52 Weeks Live. I sadly um, got a little waylaid last Thursday when I was going to um, market. And so last week didn't work. But um, we are rescheduling with Kita. Absolutely. Um, and I'm sorry we didn't do it. I'm very sorry we didn't do it. Um, well done. And I am just inviting Adam to join us. Hey, everybody. So, Margaret was really great. It was so... Hey! Hey! Look at that background. I'm a Adam. Little, I'm a little, like, like off, like, high here. Hold on a second. Yeah, I feel like you have a beautiful <laughs> filter. I don't actually. It's light. I mean, maybe this will work. Let me see here. Oh, look at this sweetie behind you. Who's oh, that? Oh, I know my babies. Hold on. Let's try to get this better. Your baby looks a lot like my baby. Is that better? Oh no, he doesn't at all. That was a big fat lie. Um. Yes. Great. Oh well. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Much well. better. Um. Of course, it would be perfect if you turned toward the light. But I like a little backlight sometimes. They're really this, they're, yeah, I guess I do that. Hold on. Let me just reset up for you. Hold oh, on. my God, look at this beautiful. It's great. We inadvertently get a, a great hold glimpse on. of, all, oh, that's so much better. I've done these. I do these, and I hold the camera. So I'm trying not to hold it this time. Not any place to sit. Now we get to see you. Now I have to do this lower. Guess what? Guess what I just had today? What? My sons graduated from middle school. No. So we had, there was a big ceremony and it was great. And oh now I get God, to talk to you. So this congratulations. Is big... What? How does that feel to have big kids? Pretty exciting. Wow. Pretty exciting. So, Adam, how are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm really well. I'm really glad to see you. I haven't spoken to you since um, like a few months ago. Yes. When, yes. Um, and I watched a great video that you did for Vogue that yeah. I found super inspiring, like incredibly uh, inspiring. I look back on that now and it was such an emotional time and it was so, emo was so, was so emotional and uh, so happy to be through that time, finally, at least in our business, I know people were thinking about their house a lot during the pandemic. Yep, 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 yep. People were not thinking about party dresses during the pandemic. <laughs> no, no. It, and I'm sure it was just like a terrifying white knuckle ride through COVID. It was really, really, really terrifying. And, uh, you know, my overarching goal was, I know we're going to survive this. I don't know how. How do we keep all of our employees? Um, yeah which uh, except for two, we did, and I'm proud of that. Yeah, and you should be. Yeah. So, so let's catch everybody up with where you started and how you got to be where you're at. There's a sentence for the ages. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was terrible. Sorry. Very descriptive. Um, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, a fashion capital of the world. Mother was an interior designer. Father, an avid collector. Um, I um, I always wanted to be a fashion designer, but I didn't know yeah. even how to do that. Like, how do I figure this out? Uh, I went to Cornell. I studied psychology, which for all of us working with clients knows that's really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right up there with you know business or law in terms of usefulness. Even better for our business, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. And, but I lived for a year in Paris during school and there I just got like immersed in the, in the fashion world and real, I guess I realized it was a world that I didn't mm. know um, existed. But when I called home to tell my father that instead of taking that job at Bear Stearns I had gotten, I was going to uh, stay in Paris and study fashion. He's like, well, you have a good time with that and all. Yeah. So I came back and I started at Bear Stearns and I worked there. Oh, so he just completely shut the door on that idea. Is it? That's yeah. Is, he didn't. She was like, fine, but you're on your own. And you right. Know, I didn't know what that meant. And you exactly, saw the writing knew, on the wall. I knew I didn't like that that concept. Um, and I was at Bear Stearns for a few months. They liked me amazingly. I hated every second. I had really long blonde hair. 
you know. Did you know me? You probably knew me when I had long blonde. I if if I did, then you wore it in a ponytail because no, I, no, 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 not in a ponytail. No, but it no, was then like I've Joan, only known you with your haircut. It was like Joan Rivers blonde, blown out with the curling hair, uh, curling. I know all. I know all about that. Thank you know all about that, okay? <laughs> and I used to use sun in. You know, oh, yeah. underneath the heat lamp. Yeah, perfect. My my father, or no, that that's a lie. Um, my friends and I used to call it, we say that we'd had a sun in run in. A sun in run in, yes. You I know, had a lot. We'd show up and our hair would be orange. Which now I understand is called a single process. <laughs> yeah. One okay, that was a bad single process. So um, uh, I they told me I had to get my hair cut. I'm like, I guess this is an adult. I'm an adult at 21. I actually walked up Madison Avenue. I stopped into the Ralph Lauren store, the mansion, and I applied for a job. And they hired me because of my long blonde hair. Yeah. Um, and I quit Bear Stearns and started there. Um, and started in it, the character. It's interesting before. that in their attempt to crush your individual individuality, you found it. I found it. I'm like, screw this. I mean, you know. Um, and I started there, was there for about a, a year, and then went to Oscar de la Renta and just grew up at Oscar. Yeah. Learned design from arguably, you know, one of one of the greats, not arguably, oh, yeah. from one of the greats. Yeah, from one of the greats. Um, and I became the creative director there when I was 26. And we just had this most amazing time. His daughter Eliza came. It was just this fun, vibrant, um, super vibrant time. And, and oh my God, I mean, you know, just from from him and his genius to his sewer's genius and his whole life and all that. It just was so, the whole thing was And really, the international. The whole thing. Like everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we would all travel to places and the houses we saw in the yeah, garden. And misses. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah Their never mind. Never mind. And I, of course, I've never been exposed to that. Um, so. Well, that, I mean, that is a real level of, you know, it's weird to be exposed to that. Yeah, I, I was totally th like thrown into the deep end and thank the Lord, I was just like so wide eyed, like, oh my God, you know, this is, and, and Oscar was actually, and Oscar, and, and was, he was always so kind too. He, he loved that the kids were learning and that, you know, it was part of this, this acceptance and passing on. So it was, it was just amazing. I mean, it just was incredible. How did you get that first job at Oscars? Like, what did you show? Did you have drawings? Did you? Oh no! Like, what my was my my boss at Ralph Lauren came to me and said, um, "I'm leaving Ralph Lauren. I'm going to Oscar de la Renta, and I want you to come with me." And as assistants in those days, you went with your boss. Right. But I didn't grow up in a world of ball gowns. Oscar sold men's ties at J.C. Penney's, so I was like, "Why are we going from Ralph Lauren, which was like the Hermes in the '90s yeah. of, of America?" to Oscar who sells men ties at JC Penney's and she looked at me like you know absolutely nothing. Yeah, I don't even know I didn't even know that detail. Yeah, Cuz he had all these businesses, you know, that's yeah. that made all the money. Um back in the day. Um so that's how I went and the first day I was there, I basically sat next to the kitchen and he had a he had a a, a chef of course who made lunch and I went and plopped down next to him during lunch, not realizing this was a reserved seat or anything. And I was in a yeah, full yeah. Ralph, Ralph Lauren getup of all getups, like yeah. five cashmere uh, sweaters yeah, on yeah, my yeah. neck. Um, Did you have, were you wearing jeans and were they turned up? At the I end? was not. I was wearing wide, very wide army green linen pants with suspenders. Love. Gatsby, um, you're killing me. Crocodile gladiator sandals to top it off. And, and I had this blonde hair and he literally turned to me and he had to get some fear in his eyes because he'd never he'd never seen a boy look like that. And he's like, "Do you work here? <laughs> Who are you?" <laughs> and I said, "I'm Adam." And then Eliza came in and said, "Oh, Oscar, this is Adam." And and it just began this wonderful mentorship that that lasted uh, all those years. And I just grew up there. I started as you yeah. know an assistant in licensing. And and at 26, you got that incredible job, which is incredible. It was incredible, yeah. Um incredible. and. And I remember from the video that you you started a side project with Oscar's blessing while you were working for him. Yeah, at the end of which is amazing. Heavy, I was there for eight nine years, and and but I had entrepreneurship in my blood. I came from a family of entrepreneurs, so I wanted to start my own business. Um, and I always worked. I've always worn T-shirts, white T-shirts. Even there, I wore a lot of like white V-neck T-shirts, and I could never find a perfect one. All this stuff. So I decided I was going to launch a luxury brand of men's and women's T-shirts. 
um, called Adam Plus Eve. And I started it with actually my first boss from Ralph Lauren. So it was all sort of full circle. And I went to Oscar and said, you know, I love being here so much. It's so incredible, but I also have this dream of my own. And so he, I told him about these t-shirts. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Men's and women's luxury t-shirts. But, you know, stay here and do that and see how it goes. Uh-oh, here, here come on. Uh -oh. What? What? Percy. Sorry. Here they are. Um, so, there's... Kiki, say hi. Oh, yeah. Hi. 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 I have three monsters here. Um, so, um, I started it, and about... about Three months into it, we were making these t-shirts. We launched with Sex Fifth Avenue. I get this phone call. It was late at night in my other office. And uh, I had a Chinese production director with a really thick accent. And she says, Opa, on phone. And I pick it up, and it's Oprah. And I'm like, oh my god. What? Um, hi. Yeah. And she's like, uh, Adam, I've herself? been on hold for, yeah, herself. Plus, she said, I've been on hold for seven minutes and 30 seconds. And I'm like, well, uh, I don't know what you wanted, but I'm so happy you didn't hang up. And she said, I want three dozen t-shirts. I was gifted this t-shirt. I think you make this t-shirt. I cut all the labels out of my clothes. Of course you do. And here's my American Express. If I don't pay retail, I'm going to send them back. Um, that is... Uh, you know, that's why we love Oprah. That's a star for you. And so I left there and I went into my little team of four people. I was like, you guys, that was Oprah on the phone. She likes what we're doing. Did and they believe you? Huh? Did they believe you? Yeah, because Oprah, Oprah... Yeah, they're like, oh, my God, everyone was so hyped up. It was so great. And um, I wrote her this love letter just about how much it meant that she had called. Yeah. And, she, and uh, she, um, her team, like, three months later called and said, Miss Winfrey wants you on her show. And, I, and so, long story short, that, those were the days. By the way, show. did you call Oscar Mr. DeLorenta or did you call him Oscar? Uh, it just all depended. Um, Mr. Lorenzo, sometimes, and Oscar a lot. Okay. It, 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 probably Oscar more. Okay. Mrs. No, Alden. I just like that you said, uh, Ms. Winfrey, you know, uh, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with an honorific that here and there. No, no. I think probably in public, always Mr. and maybe in the office. Right, Oscar. right. I don't think you know, my, my father never told my husband he could call him Mark. <laughs> no. Yeah. Old school, right? Yeah. He was like, Pavlos would never be so incorrect. You know, he's too correct. I'm too not correct. gonna tell him that. Not gonna interfere with that. Yeah. Oscar never said it any one way or the other, but you know, it was yeah, a, yeah, yeah. It was a dressed up place. Yeah. And he was um, so elegant. So elegant. And so after Oprah, things really exploded and I had all this investment. I launched a big contemporary brand. Well, what was the Oprah effect? Was it night and day? Like the next day? Oprah was that day, and uh, she actually called when it, because it, it ran at different time zones, depending on where you live. She called during the first time zone, and literally, I don't know how she got through because all the phones were down. It, it was this madhouse of millions of people on her site. In fact, there is this a soft corn porn thing called adamandeve.com. Oh, no. They sell, like, toys and things. It's a very, very big business. If you listen to Sirius XM, they advertise all the time. And we were Adam Plus Eve. We took down the adamandeve.com site um, for three days. And Oprah had to put a banner on her website saying, because she was getting all these complaints, how yeah, can yeah, you yeah. support Baiting this young man who sells dildos? <laughs> so she had to explain on her site that we were Adam <laughs> Plus Eve, not Adam and Eve. Um, yeah. But it was just huge. And then Richemont, which owns Cartier and Chloe, came in and bought half the brand. And we launched in contemporary fashion, which is sort of dressed for $500. Um, and we grew quite big. We had five stores, five of our own. I wound up selling the company, working for these guys, not really happy with what we were making. And I decided to quit and move to Brazil and open a little hotel. And here I am six years later, having launched a designer brand. And <laughs> now it's Adam Lippis. Aren't now you happy? Now it's Adam Lippis. Aren't you happy that that first one wasn't your name? So happy. I mean, I had to buy my name back from this big company, oh, you Adam, did. because of confusion in the marketplace. But there would have been more confusion. Um, yes, I'm really happy. You don't think um, about using your name. What did that take? How long did it take before you could, I mean, was it extortionate? I had luckily made some money because I had sold shares twice, sold it once and sold some shares twice. I had a townhouse in New York City on 10th Street that I sold. And I bought, I bought it back 
um, a lot of these companies don't let you just because they're spiteful, but they had change in management and all this stuff that they allowed. I you. think everyone's watching the Halston um, yeah. miniseries. I've not watched the series, but I watched the documentary. And yeah. Yeah, it's, it's what can happen is scary stuff. My advice on that is unless you're going to sell your, your name for enough money that you're going to go away and do maybe your dream and never come back, great. But if you ever think that there's more to it, just be really, really careful. I see someone's asking what the name of the company that bought it. Uh, I've been told I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so wait, let's know the name of your company. Your company is Adam Lippis. It's now Adam, Adam Lippis. I was moving to Brazil. I had moved to the country. I have a country house in the Berkshires that I'm at now, and I was going to move to Brazil. And my father said, you know, that sounds like a good exit clause. Do you really want to take an exit clause at 30? Whatever. And I started really uh, missing designing clothing and realizing this was an opportunity to not, I launched t-shirts a lot because I couldn't launch luxury fashion working with Oscar. That wouldn't have been right. He taught me everything I know. Then I had investment. They put me into contemporary. I never could do what I wanted to do mm -hmm. on my own without having people tell me what to do. Right. And so and everyone's like, you're crazy. You got out of fashion alive with some money. Yeah, yeah. Go away, you know? Yeah. And some days, especially during the pandemic, I realized they were right. Um, but I, I did it anyhow. And, and now we're six years in. Um, and you and I have had this conversation. You love interiors. You love auctions, furniture auctions. You love, you, you love it all. Like d design, it's, it's style. It's all in you. It's not separable. I am a, yeah, I mean, I am a really frustrated interior designer. There was no question. In fact, when people meet me out at like Neiman Marcus at trunk shows, they're like, but wait, I thought your Instagram was an interior designer Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and when I post fashion, I get the least likes because everyone, you know, it's the rooms and the yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, you know, I love, you know, for 52 weeks, you know, yeah. this is, it's all, it's all connected. It is. Um, and, and I love just looking behind you and seeing those beautiful French chairs and looking at like, what is on the floor on like, is that tile or is that a rug? That is a, a English Victorian needlepoint. It Thanks. looks amazing. Really pretty. Thank you. Um, you know, and I, I say to, I like to move a lot, especially in the New York, because I think when you move, it gives you a chance to re-explore um, your space that yeah. you might not do in the same four walls. And my father will always say the same thing. Well, you've got a lot going on, young man, with your business. Don't you want to focus? And I'm like, it's so weird because it's all part of the same mind. It is all part of the same Yeah. Um, One thing and is I mean, other. if you look at Oscar's houses, you look at your house, you look at Bill Blass's house, um, I, I feel like some of the greatest interiors are, or Givenchy, uh, oh the, some God, of the greatest yeah. interiors are those of people who are in fashion. Yeah, well, um, it's also, I think, different because I think when you do a, a, a space as a fashion designer only for yourself, um, you can have more joy. It's like if I had to decorate, if I had to design a bunch of clothes for me, I might not have as much fun because I'm doing it for other people all day long. You know, and that's why I think there's more freedom maybe when, in t when uh, fashion designers do their homes, just because they're free. I think I need to have one of your, I think I'm gonna, I hope you still make them the opera capes, by the way. We do. Like there's a, the, um, ugh, they're so cool. You're, I mean, you're very much in, in the glamor zone where, where I like to be in terms of interior design. Yes, exactly. Like your clothes are, are for that woman, um, you know, the, the Annette de Laurentiis or Adita Blair, like these big, bold opera capes. I mean, yeah. come on. It's funny, Dita Blair and I have now been working a lot together on clothing for her. And she is just- She's amazing. And she is, I have this, she's precise. She is so precise. And she doesn't buy a lot, but what she does, it's real collaboration with me, is such this eye on this woman, not only in, in an overall look, in the precision from the stitching, and she looks, it's been such a, a joy. I just had lunch with her and, and some fittings last week, so she was on my mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really incredible. She's always on my mind. <laughs> yeah, mine too, actually, like mine those, too. Those women, especially because they're women, you know, Marilla and yeah. Nelly, Dita Blair, Annette de Laurenta, Jane Reitzman. Oh, yeah, incredible. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, they're real, it's like a real moment. And I, that I feel has, you know, that, that era and the, that vintage woman. Yeah. Um, it, it has not continued. 
You know, I think I think it can be fair. I think, and and I hope I'm. I think you. I think I'm right. We have a similar interior design aesthetic, you and I. And it's yes, funny because I, I often show my collections in my apartment in New York. And when people come, whether from stores or press, when they see it in that setting, they often say, "I get it now. Yeah. I get it now. I get it. This is where this is where these clothes live." And and that sort of three hundred and sixty view of design. Um, I mean, I learned it from Oscar. Yeah. And, and also it, it, it's identity. And yeah. it's the identity of the boy with the long blonde hair. Yeah. It's, you know, you, you've, you would not be separated from your identity, which I very much admire. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure, you know, you, lots of people who go into design, whether it's fashion or, or interior design, kiss a lot of design frogs before they find their own voice. But obviously like yeah. yours, you, you came constructed, you were, well, you, you were already there. I think in my first brand, I had to do a lot of what I was told um, that maybe I wasn't proud of. And I promised myself in this brand, I was not going to do anything I wasn't proud of. And if I what, don't want to see it on the street, don't you, make it. At what age did you leave that first brand? Um, 38. Okay, so wow. You've just been um, burning rubber. Well, you know, it's... Um, I love when you love what you do. It's sort of just, it's what it's who you are. It's, you know, it doesn't, it feels just, uh, the, the pandemic was great for that time to take a step back and evaluate, I think probably for everyone, um, especially the fashion. I mean, define great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> great. That's the only way it was. In great. retrospect. In retrospect, yeah. it'll, it gave us some time. Um, it forced that time, um, and in, in, in our world, that was asking for more, more, more. That wasn't necessar even necessary, all this more, more, more. Yeah. So that was, I mean, we, we just opened our first store. Where is it? Uh, in Brookfield Place, downtown. Um, that is across from the World Trade Center. It's an indoor- oh, I, You know, I had no idea what you were talking okay. about. Okay, like, it is Brookfield? so beautiful. There, we are in between Gucci and Louis Vuitton, across from Bottega. Scent and Bros just opened down there. It is so civilized. I didn't know what it was either until they called and said, we have an old Hermes shop we want to show you. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, be, I'll <laughs> pop it right on over. Yeah. Um, and so that has been just incredible. And I designed it to look like my living room in New York, which has been fun. Um, and yeah, so there's, there's a lot of good. So who, you know, somebody's just commenting that, that in addition to being the Dita Blairs, it's also everyday women who, a mother who does stuff also wants those moments yeah. of glamour, which is totally true. Um, do you have a notion in mind when you think of who who your client is? Like, what is their relationship to design, to style? Do they live like you? Are they all kinds of people? They, you know, it's it's funny. I don't have an idea. I actually I know because I I do about non-pandemic. I do about twenty to twenty-five store visits a season. So I go to maybe fifty to. Oh, this woman says, "Tell Adam it's Malaysia." Hi, Malaysia. How are you? That. She just bought the most beautiful floral belt from us. She looks so great in it. Um, I, I, I travel, so I meet these customers everywhere. Um, so I really know who she is. She is a woman, is the foremost. You know, we dress, we do dress from 18, but that's not our core. Up to 80, we dress all sizes. She is a woman. She is not led by trends. You know, our woman wants a touch of glamour, but in the American sportswear way, which she wants to be appropriate. And I know that's maybe such a bad word today. No, I love that word. <laughs> also, as it relates to decorating. Yeah, she, 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 she's not looking to be the coolest kid on the block. And I'm not the coolest designer on the block. Um, and and, and she, she, cool. like, she wants to be on trend, but she doesn't want to be trendy at all, you know? But right. she leads with, she leads- She doesn't want to be out of fashion. Exactly, and she leads with, with, with quality and she really respects that. Um, but the sportswear component is really important. How can she mix and match it? How can we play? I don't design anything that can't be worn with flats. Um, we love heels, we show in heels all the time, but I don't want to force a woman into a heel. And so I think that's all, that's all who she is. You know, it's yeah. really interesting because traveling to like Neiman Marcus, for example, you know, we sit next to Valentino in the stores and our clothes are not Valentino prices, but they're close. And the fact that this woman's gonna come by us instead of buying Celine or Valentino or, is always like, wow. And she's doing it because of the fabric and the quality and how it makes yeah. her feel and, 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 and all that stuff. So we're very in touch with that because we cannot trade on our name. I can't add an extra zero because of my name. It's, has, the right. clothes have to stand on their own. Yeah. 
So I was reading an article during the pandemic about the row. Mm -hmm. And um, I assume it applied, you know, all the things I was reading applies to you as well. The about like the architecture of the clothes and the quality mm -hmm. and the stitching and mm -hmm. and um, uh, yes, and because you always have pockets. Is that does like I would assume that that creates a whole level of difficulty for you that it's maybe a joy to solve. Y yes. Uh, the row makes the most beautiful clothing. Um, similar is certainly in quality to what we do, but I think that it's so important and has been for me to be out there. Like you go to market, you to be out there to see who is this person buying the clothes? Because sometimes what you think in your head is not reality or sure. Awful. And yeah. so that learning process for me has been super, super important. For example, when I launched, I wanted no prints, zero, none. And, and then we started doing these collaborations with, with florists for our prints. Mm -hmm. And now prints are, we're like known for our florals. So wait a minute, you were doing collaborations with florists? Tell me how that works. We do them all the time. We're do, we did, we've done a lot with Putnam and Putnam, um, this incredible florist up from New York and LA. Um, we're doing one with a woman for next season who makes sugar flowers, the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life. I don't even know what um, that is. So they make a bouquet. Uh -huh. We shoot it in 3D. Then we print it. We make jacquards. We embroider it. Yeah. We do all sorts of stuff to it. But those flowers were actually on my desk in our studio, which makes it so fun. So, yeah, for me, like, interviewing people and talking to people about design, that is exactly what I want to hear. Yeah. It just means that you, you are celebrating design in its every it's every incarnation, but also the fact that that is such a respectful uh, relationship with that florist. You know, it's, it's giving them the respect and their due, as well as a collaboration. I really think that what what we make because our clothes are fairly simple in 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 they're not simple in construction, but simple in make. There's not some crazy, you know, everything going on. That the clothes are as beautiful as they are because of the people who make the fabric in the mills, because of the prints, the artists we use. And we note them on all of our hang tags, the people who are involved, just because it's, it's, so, it's so important. And too long fashion designers, even from the world I came from, it was me, the disease of me, 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 me. And it's, it's so not me, it's, it's, it's so many. I call that bossitis. Yeah, but it's I, out I have, there. I have flare ups of bossitis with my it. husband yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah. And then he reminds me that he doesn't work for me. <laughs> like, exactly. But maybe you do. <laughs> or maybe you should. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's also really important because how can you have something that's a luxury good or in, in any respect expensive without explaining why it's expensive? Yeah. It's Both true. in terms of like quality, the hands that touched it, the people that, that all work together to get that thing out there. And you know the customer wants to know today. They 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 are very yeah. educated, and they want to know. And they want to feel good about it. And and they want to feel feel good that what they're buying is authentic. I think the uh, the authenticity to product to design is really really important because otherwise they can go to one of the the fast fashion brands and get some pretty good looking stuff. Do you think that I mean? Do you think fast fashion is going to um, stay? Yes. I mean, on the one hand, it's great for people who, who, you know, you want clothes and you can't afford crazy prices. But I feel like the, the ethical conversation about it, that it's just like, you know. I think the majority of people care about the ethical conversation as long as it doesn't cost them anything. Once it costs them money, they, they pass. Um, and I think one of the issues with fast fashion is the amount of copying they do. Um, from yep. design houses is a real problem. And, and obviously people are paying the price down the road from, from the disposability of the fashion to the wages they're paying to their footprint. Um, and there's such a vibrant vintage market. I wish some of these people were like, you know what, I'm gonna buy one beautiful old Chanel jacket instead yeah. of four um, or five high fashion jackets um yeah though i mean as a people we're bigger than than you know we're taller we're fatter we're all of these things you know a lot of the vintage clothing it's just like mini stuff yeah 
it depends. You, you can find, I mean, you know, sometimes it's not as easy, I think, to find it as, it takes more searching than popping into your corner store and buying yeah. fast fashion. But I mean, if, I have like total monkey arms and every time I get, a, you know, unless I were to have a bespoke made for me, I've got like a half a foot of arm coming out of that sleeve. I'm like, okay, we're going to call it three quarter length. <laughs> and no one makes makes sleeves long enough for you? Um, no, sometimes. but or, or I just have to get a very large size and then that, that deals with the disparity of arm to, oh, Leisha says bracelet Bra wrists. Right. You've just totally rebranded it. I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> that's a great, <laughs> that's a great spin on it. And my guess is you have some good bracelets. I do. Yeah, good, good. Um, uh, colorful at least. Oh, yes, good. So if you are the woman for whom you design, or rather, if you were a woman, would you be the woman for whom you design? Um, I certainly hope so. Um, okay. not, not, not all of what comes out of our studio are things that would be right for me, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm proud of it. And when I see it on the woman, uh, which it, who, who it is right for, I'm proud to see her in it. And, yeah. it's, you know, I, I, I tell this story and it's such a, such a true story. We have a very wide size range and I deal with all ages. And when I get a woman in a fitting room who's a little insecure about her body or what she's going to put on or she's not sure about her print, and she puts this on and she smiles in that fitting room. It's such a great yeah. joy to me um, because you, got, you brought her this little dream. And so everything that comes out of our studio, I hope will do that. I, fashion has been very, um, they've excluded a, a lot of people. Uh, you can't wear us because we're only for 18 year olds. You can't wear us, we don't go above a size four. Yeah. And we're in our brand, I, I totally, this is, if you can afford our clothes, I want you to wear them and be happy. Yeah. Period. And and a rising rising tide raises all boats. Yeah, exactly. you know if yeah. if ever if there's like a little more beauty in the world, um, whatever that means, that's a lovely thing. It is. Yeah, more smiles, more happiness. It, it is, and to feel good about yourself is really that's when fashion people say, "Fat, oh, you're in the most vacuous business." I'm like, not if we help someone dream or not. You know, that's just yeah. so nice, so wonderful. Yeah, totally. Um, tell me about your house. I am in a house in the Berkshires where we just opened a cannabis shop and brand, which is really fun. As really? Shop. Yes. Um, opened three months ago. Just crazy business. Um, but I'm in right outside of Great Barrington. The main house is an old barn from 1780. It was converted in 1880 by a printmaker. Who used the barn to make? Didn't it. you and I have a conversation about the 1840s? That that was our happy place. I don't think so. What did we say? Or are you just like Madeline Castanian that we both love Madeline? I think Ma the, the Madeline. That was it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so, so this is 1880s converted. Converted, and it was. It's it's not a big house, but it's very very grand. Very very grand rooms, paneling everywhere. Very sort of turn of the century grand. Um, on a hundred acres, and it's just heaven. And I always wanted to spend more time here. That was like my goal instead of the weekend. And now I have flopped it totally, and I'm not going to go back to the other way. So I'm in New York about two nights a week, and I'm up here um, the rest of the time, mostly outside in the garden. I really work in the garden until Again, I can. I, I love your connection to flowers and how it, it, it feeds you. Flowers and the spatial layout of outdoor rooms, which I find so complicated that it just keeps me up at night. And I just love, I just, it obsesses me to a level that I just love, um, I love to work on. I've seen every Monty Don um, Gardener's World there is. Um, and yes, the obvious correlation, somebody just wrote growing weed. Um, yeah, you know, we don't grow any weed yeah. here at the house. That's against the law. What is your, what is your weed brand about? It's called Farnsworth. Mm -hmm. um, Farnsworth Fine Cannabis. Um, it, it, it is about bringing um, very much a luxury, uh, elevated shopping experience to the cannabis world. If any of you have been in a cannabis shop, the majority of them, except for very few, it's like going to you're you're meant to feel it's like you're doing something illegal there you have to wait outside there's you can't see in it's dark they throw stuff at you ours is the most beautiful showroom uh, you've ever seen we worked with a designer um simon Aldridge, an, an interior designer 
or no, architect. a merchandiser? Architect. architect. Architect, okay. He did the building and uh, worked with me on the interiors. And it's a mix of brand, other very high-end brands, our own Farnsworth brand, and then a selection of uh, uh, clothing. We did a collaboration with the Webster, that great store. We have a lot of antique smoking accessories from Jack, Jack Kerouac's lighter to old Dunhill, Cartier, all the things we all know and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and it's just so really it's a total, a total atmosphere. Total wonderful shopping um, experience atmosphere. Farms with fine cannabis. If you want to look it up online, you can order on. Do you that. have pictures of the interiors? If I look, it yes, up? it's all in there. It's all in there. And and somebody had asked that describe how what your approach to doing your fashion interiors, the stores, um, your retail spaces. You said to look like your living room, but what is that? What is that? It was so interesting. I was um, my living room. I've used Theron Ball setting pink everywhere always and then i've dyed um silk file to match so if it's not the paint it's the silk mm -hmm. file so the store is all silk file siso this huge irish uh table from 1790 massive table in the center wicker urns um a lot of furniture from my living room actually um it's really a place to come and sit you know i had when i was designing it, i had this sort of like oh my god moment because we're sitting, as I said, in between Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and Bottega. And it's like, those stores are so designed. They are concepts. Not, not only could I not do a concept like that, I can't afford to execute a concept like that. Um, you know, if they're spending probably, they're spending who knows what, millions of dollars off at a store. We don't have that. So, but how can I make it look warm and inviting and, and yeah. rich and expensive without it looking like, oh my God, there's grandma's, you know, yeah, yeah, outlet totally. over there. Um, and so that was the challenge. And, and I really, I'm very pleased with how it's came out. And we've had the most incredible people come into the store who say, oh my God, this is what we need in New York. I can sit down here, I can look at a book, I can yeah. look at your antiques. I have a huge, like about a hundred antiques, mostly, mostly glass sort of baccarat with enamel painting and that of the ilk. Um, so there's a lot of discovery there, not just our clothing. It's what, it's lifestyle, what goes with yeah, these these this clothing. Do you see yourself going into lifestyle? I mean, obviously, the weed has well, to the be. Well, the weed is ultimate lifestyle. Yes, well, we yeah, launched, it's a we, lifestyle. We launched tabletop with Oka, the English brand. That I know. So we just and launched, that's amazing. We just launched that. We're expanding our assortment with them to include some other things that they haven't announced yet. So I guess I shouldn't. Yeah, don't. Um, they'd probably be don't mad. Get in trouble, Adam. And we're very close to furniture. I'm really um, excited about furniture. Um, I, um, yeah, we'll see. See, I'm, I'm pushing them to do some different sort of things. I don't know if they're gonna, they're gonna look at me like I have five heads, so they may not do it, but they seem very interested. So all but in good time. But it's so great that, that in your stores have already um, expressed that point of view, that that's a very natural, that's a very natural progression. And it's very Ralphian. It is, yeah, exactly. It is, it's totally. And it's a total natural progression. I think like fashion uh, in your world, understanding what sells in America is very important. The things I've been learning are, are, are things I just didn't know. So how to take that information and make it you is really, it's a fun, fun challenge. Yeah. Um, so. I have a very hard time understanding data, um, not because I'm a dodo. <laughs> But like sometimes I will, I will see that a category is selling very well. And I will think to myself, does that mean I'm really good at this category and therefore should stick to it? Or does it mean I need to let it go and then work to bolster the other stuff? And I, I mean, and it could, it could be both. But um, I ne there are so many ways that you can take any little nugget of information and run yes. with it. In fashion, most of the time, for me at least, when something doesn't sell well, I usually can know why. When something when something does sell well, I'm boggled. Uh, and and right. if I try to redo it, it fails. So be happy. Sold out's a good word in our in our Yeah. Our. So if you have something that fails, you don't try to tinker with it. You're like, uh, oh, nope. If it fails, there's usually a good reason. I mean, I like to blame production, obviously. Uh, it didn't fit well. <laughs> Um, but there is often a reason, but then things, you know, we just launched these really beautiful for um, our new collection or summer collection, these cotton, Japanese cotton poplin, big dresses, long sleeve, 
some very soft pleats here with girl grain belt. Super easy. Yeah, yeah. Oversized things rarely sell. They just don't. We have sold out of them from size zero to size 18. They've sold out. So I'm like, why did that work? Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it's hard to know. The fair that also sounds, that also, what, like, when did you launch that? When did that come out? About three weeks ago. I, it sounds, well, you know the minute I'm going to get off and go look at it. And I mean, I know I'm very well aware of what you sell and I love it, especially because it comes in all sizes. Yeah. Um, I, uh, wait, what is the color of your pink? Setting plaster. Okay. So it is. Thank and it's not Ella. the best name for anything. It could have totally. been any color. I just said Totally. But, um, but what you describe, it like, it sounds so genteel. It sounds like a garden party. It, it sounds like. It sounds like a nostalgic yearning for people to return to yeah. after the year of sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. We are done with sweatpants. I can tell you that. Thank God. Thank the yeah. Lord. It and it's a great dress for summer for flats for heels dress up dress. Yeah. But still. I love I love that you make it for flats. I I do love heels, but you know as I get older, you know you don't want to walk in them. They're yeah. what I call sitting shoes. I don't know, but I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I love, I love how it's, it's, um, I hate the word aspirational only because it's so overused, Yeah. but it is nice to have something that you can both have, but that harkens to what you might wish you were, feeling or might, what you might wish to, how you might wish to live. Yeah. And, and feeling good. This idea of coming out of sweatpants, what you go into, you're not going to go back into your, tight fit and flare jacquard you know they're small yeah. small steps small steps do you think um that the generations that are coming up will be bolder i mean i feel like uh, in some respects their take on identity and that their their total um understanding that they are do their own identity whatever that might be might make make fashion more interesting in terms of boldness as they grow up. Yeah, I think they certainly have a lot of points of view and they have been much more able to explore their style because instead of just seeing, for example, how your mother dressed, they're seeing how 8 million people on Instagram are dressing. Yeah. So they're super exposed to, and without the filter of any magazine, they're super exposed now to finding their own style, You know, especially with our intern program. I can't believe some of the outfits these, these kids show up in. What and is really your thought intern out. program? Thought out, yeah, and consistent, yeah, you know. I mean, it's not 8 million people, but we have a nice little yes. interim program. And I love to see, my favorite thing is seeing what they're wearing. And um, none of them can afford designer, so they're, and they don't wear um, fast fashion. They buy a vintage and how they put it together. And it's, it's, it's very cool, it's really cool to see. Yeah, and you're grooming them to be your customer. Yeah, I hope, or every once in a while a rich one comes in, I'm like, sorry, what does your mother like to wear? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, do you, okay, so back to your entrepreneurship and the fact that you had your exit strategy back in the day. Um, now that you, you had that whole circuitous path where you did it, left, had to buy your name back, start again, um, there's no exit now, is there? You don't sound like you ever want to exit. No, I'm, I don't want to do, I don't want to work, I don't want to work forever. Um, I'm sure. Are you sure? I'm positive. Because it sounds like you've got, a, a, what would you do? Would you garden? I would love to buy and restore a chateau in France yeah. um, that has gardens that need as much restoration as this house and just give myself to that. And it's, it's a full-time job. Yeah, that is work. <laughs> it is work. I have to be able to afford it, but I, I want to do it. I mean, I do, um, I have a help here, but I do a lot of them. I mean, I'm out doing the maintenance every day. The gardener's like, I don't have any client that accomplishes as much as you do in one day. I'm like trying to show you how much can be done in one day. Yeah. You know, I love that. I love that whole, it's my exercise. And so um, I would love to, to do that. Um, so somebody's asking why France. I assume it's because it is France, and because that's it was your first, your first romance. It was... is. Fr it's funny because I like the architecture in England better and the gardens in England better. But France is my first romance. When you study abroad, I think 
It is yeah. just like, I mean, it just, and never mind the food, um, the whole thing. Um, yeah. Is, I is, mean, uh, Le Vaux, uh, for yeah. Le Vicomte, I mean. I mean. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, no, I mean ones that I can afford. Yeah, yeah. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I have looked at both, but France is, is where I want to be. I mean, I drive the real estate agents in France insane. Um, wow, it's so, so you're really, you're really like making moves to accomplish this. Yeah. It's not, not pie in the sky. That's not gonna happen today, but it's, when it's gonna happen, I'm ready because I have my, all my details. I've been to, I've been on two trips to look, mm -hmm. just to understand better. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's my new escape clause. Um, so if you design furniture mm. um, or, you know, interior finishes, would you use them? Uh, I have been thinking about that a lot because yeah. like I just said in clothing, if I wouldn't use the majority of them in my own home, why am I putting it? Out? I, I agree, but it's... Um, I totally agree. I mean, one obviously. Of, I one of my issues is I do not buy new things ever. I, I don't buy new furniture. I just, it's not really what I do. But uh, I mean, you have to do curtains. You have to, like, when you're, your curtains in your house, do you have um, dressmaker fabrics? I have dressmaker fabrics and I sew them in the office. And I have now have an expert <laughs> drape maker because it took a lot of, a lot of pairs of drapes to yeah. get right. Um, yeah, I've been thinking, that's funny you bring that up because I've been thinking a lot about that or where would I use it or how would I use it? And, um, you know, I'm excited with this process because they, they're a very fine manufacturer that people are talking to and they want me to go to their factories. And I, I think when I start seeing how things are made, it'll give me a, a better appreciation as well. Yeah. So yes, the goal would be, I would, I would use it in my home. Yeah. I think you, it, it, it it'll be interesting to watch you go through that because, because your clothes are not for you. Yeah, this will yeah. be your first brush with being the end user of the thing you're designing. You know, I use and I it's use exciting. I, I use I use the Oka plates. Um, yeah, both, of course, both sets, course. and I have and I have a lot of plates, but I use them all the time, and I love them. So, and they go in the dishwasher, which I realize I love even more. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They must. Yeah. Um, um, yes, somebody's saying that looking for vintage anything is the best way to recycle, whether True. you make uh, curtains out of old dresses or... True. Th that's a little hard because you don't get the... the you get it. But I made this you don't incredible... Get the I made this incredible a slipper chair. Uh, it's, a, it's in my store in uh, Brookfield Place out of fabric from like Resort 2017. This incredible yeah. Japanese jacquard. And it's, um, it's so beautiful. Like we had just enough fabric left. It's really great. Um, I do, I, as a decorator, I, I get jealous of some of like the lesage and the incredible, oh, God, the... I mean, if you're doing this embroidery of, of um, flowers, you know, like, you know I'm already the, jealous. The shocking thing as well is the, the cost of apparel fabrics are a fraction of the cost of interior fabrics, um, which is so interesting. Our jacquards we do, it's really, it's very, it's very funny. So I tend to, for all my interior projects, and I'm a big sort of fabric cover for walls and all that stuff. I always yeah, yeah. use my own, my own fabrics that I make, always. Good, well then, yeah, because you do need to commit to, you have to really love it. Yeah, exactly. You have exactly. to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, if not, why are you using it? Right. Um, your dad is watching for it. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Moira. <laughs> Where is your father? He must have gotten bored. Um, <laughs> Cause just for a bit, you know this. That's my fault. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, he he lives with his wife in Naples, Florida, um, mm -hmm. but is building a new house in Buffalo, New York, where we're from. Building and designing a new house at 82. So God bless him, right? Yeah. Um, do you and he have the same style or his collections? You said he was a collector. D has that informed your collecting or just the fact of it informed? Oh no, you? my father is an avid collector with an incredible eye. Um, so he was the one that first exposed me to like a Geckler on 10th street. And, um, he began collecting art when I was young and, and is, has, has, has extraordinary taste from how he lives to how he dresses. So, um, it's, there's a so lot. He's of had a big hand in your a big hand. Both, both of my, them. Both my parents did. Um, my mother put things together in an incredible way, but my father, was able 
to collect and supply the pieces to do it with. He was very, and very involved mm -hmm. with a great eye. So yeah. Yeah. Um, and yes, I do love that he's 82 and building a new house. He doesn't ask me any advice on the new house because- Well, that was my next question. No. So why not? He's all, because he's afraid I'll have ideas that I'll, he's afraid, he's afraid with his new wife, I'll spend too much, basically. <laughs> okay. He likes to control the budget as well. Um, well, yeah, I guess somebody's got to control the budget. Um, <laughs> Do you think you'll ever have kids? I don't know. I thought so at one point. Um, I have three dogs. I've had a partner yeah. for 10 years who's much younger. Uh, he's he's Farnsworth. He's the namesake. Yeah. Uh, I know that's an incredibly forward question. I only ask that because when, when you think about, you know, when you're raised a certain way and what you take from it and passing it along, yeah. can be fun, can be as, as fun and creative as, as anything. I, I, I have no doubt that not, that I have no doubt that if I had children, they'd be my greatest joy in life, no matter how difficult yeah. it were. No, no doubt. matter how poorly they dress. No matter how or poorly well. they dress or behave or whatever. I just don't, I just don't know at the moment. I just don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I was thinking, oh, Chateau, Paris, kids, you know, maybe all that. Let's see. I also don't want to be the world's oldest father. So I'm working through that. Oh, there's, you don't stand a chance. <laughs> I, uh, there are too many people out there who uh, would be, who'd be. Um, okay, well, you have, you have exciting things. So you think this is, this is clearly all going to happen within the next five to 10 years. I hope so. Jeez. Um, I, I certainly, I certainly hope so. Um, I'm hoping for in the business for launch furniture this year. Um, and, but the rest, who knows in the past five, what about who jewelry? knows? Jewelry, do you do that? We do, we launched jewelry during the pandemic. It's all handmade. Okay, so I have not stumbled across your jewelry and I love jewelry. It's so pretty. It's all, a lot of it is hand painted florals, really beautiful made in Rhode Island and here in New York City. You know, we sew all of our clothing in New York City, which is such a... I did not know that. Story. New York City has some of the best sewers in the world. In fact... I'm, I'm not surprised by that. In fact, we pay more for sewing in New York than we would if we sewed in Italy. Wow. But mm -hmm. not France. France is a different, <laughs> different yeah, story. Yeah. But it's also like it's such a developed career in France, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you. I so love seeing you your beautiful Adam. face. I love seeing you. I really want to be in that room. I want you um, in this room. So I'm going to require an invitation. I, are you ever and in the I still want to see your house in the city. Yes, I want you to come see it. That is, the building, the, the house itself is so special. Forget about my apartment. It's such an extraordinary. I wake up to the boats every morning. It's just so like, wow. That is so cool. Yeah. Well, well done you. Um, Thank you. So you I, as well. And, and hearing your, your Vogue, um, your Vogue video at the beginning of this all was also, as I said, it was really inspiring. It really like, it gave me something. It made me feel really good. It also like you had gone through so much, so much and yeah. recovered and reimagined and relaunched and all those things just thrill me. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate and, um, it. And I think now I got to go buy some jewelry, which I will do this what? moment. Thank you I will so also try to save this video, but I told your peeps, you know, if I have to, we'll figure out how to film it off of this if I mess it up. Okay, good. I All want right, so much love. Thank you Kisses, so much. Kisses. Bye. And I will see you soon. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Bye. Bye.